Hi, and welcome back to this Independent Rage Question. My name is PJ McTavish, and we're going to finish it off now. So we've done part A and part B, and we have done the left-hand side of the infiltration for part C. Part finishing off now on the right-hand side, we need to do an auxiliary view following down that angle, a 20 degrees angle, do an auxiliary view of the two objects um, given a true shape of your independent trading prism and that way we can do uh, cutting planes and figure out where they finish in the elevation. Okay, so project everything down at uh, 20 degrees. If you had your adjustable set square you could just set it up and project them all down but uh, in this case I don't so everything is projected down 20 degrees to the left hand side and do an auxiliary plan. Okay, so that is all our views brought down, all our points from the elevation. We're putting x1, y1, and what we're going to do is I'm going to just put in a datum line in the plan because if you're projecting the elevation, you need to get your heights on the plan. And you're not saving too much space, but every little counts so we're projecting from the elevation therefore our heights must be found from plan so what you're going to do is basically you're going to draw in an auxiliary plan where you'll see the triangle ABC as a triangle or true shape triangle so let's bring our heights down from our datum line to find point A so go from the X or Y1 that's point A. Find your height down for B. That's point B. And then lastly, your point for C. And you can join them in together now. Now we need the height for our main prism. So let us figure out this top point here is on that line. So go from the that line down to your top point here. And that's the top point there. So that's one of our points. Uh, point here now, because you're looking at this phrase, you won't see that. This point is that far point down there, so we'll open the down line down. That's the same point, same measurement. It should be a straight line there. Next one is this point here. It is on the down line, so it's on the XY line here. The point behind it, this one here, is that distance back. Roll that down, mark that in, and that's it. We've got the height for this one, that one, and those two. So we'll draw that in strong now. Now where you hit the triangle, don't draw through it strongly. Just stop there. Okay, so that's the auxiliary view done and we need this to figure out to figure out where our points A, B and C are going to stop on the right hand side. So I'm going to put in a bit of shading now.
Okay, so that's a bit of shading just to highlight the different surfaces. So we have the blue surface here in the front, in the front down there, and the green one at the back, similar to this one right at the back, okay? Now I'm just going to zoom in on the auxiliary view for a minute. Now, what happens with this auxiliary view is you see where the triangle or the inter, um, intersecting solid cuts across from one surface to the other. So you see it cuts across the center line here and here. All right. So we have A, B, C. So it goes A, B, then it goes this point here. Let's label that. We can call that point zero. Down to C. C goes then to point one. And then one goes to A. So you have to follow that labeling in the elevation in the plan. Go A, B, zero, C, one. Okay. Now to find where C hits off this blue surface, where B and A hits off the green surface, we need to do a, we need to do a cut basically. So what I'm going to do is join the top point here to point C, follow it down and hits the bottom of the line. If I project that point back to the elevation and redo what I did, join it back up to the top point. Where it cuts across the C line, that's where C has to be in the elevation. So let's join a light line from the apex point here, the top point, down through C. This point here now where it cuts the bottom of that surface, so we're not going on to the other surface, we're staying in the same one. Find that point back in our elevation. So again, we're going to have to project it back at our 20 degrees. So find that point on the same line in the elevation. So we're projecting back like that. And where it cuts the bottom line. So that point is here. This point is there. So it's on this line. Basically where it cuts there. If I join that back to the apex point, the top point that I drew it from in the first place, that will show me exactly where the line C stops on the blue surface. So C is here. Okay. B and A are on the green surface, so they're at the back. So I can bring C down to the plan as well. Find that point C in the plan. This is point C. You must do the same thing now with points A and B to find them on the green surface. So they're going to be in hidden detail in the elevation because they're going to be at the back. So basically you're repeating the cut. So whatever the line was on the green surface in the auxiliary view, you must repeat it in the elevation and it'll give you true length that line so this is where A stops so follow A down that's A bring it down to the plan find A in plan and this is point B up here now we can't just join a, B, C, because they're on com two complete different surfaces. A and B are in the front, or sorry, at the back in the elevation. And C is in the front. Spring B down, find them plan. So to, in order to join them together, we must follow our labeling. So bring point zero and point one back up to the elevation and find them down in plan. So point zero is on that center line where the two surfaces meet, and so is point one. So we need to extend this one. So they're both on this 
intersecting line here. So this is point zero. This is point one. Let's bring them down to plan. They're going to the center line. So whatever line they are in the elevation, they must be on the same line in the plan. So this is point one, and this is point zero. Okay, so if we do the plan first, maybe it might show up a bit better for you. So A, where is A? This is A. Follow our labeling, A goes to B, B goes to zero. So A goes to B, B goes back to zero. And this is on top of the surface, so we can draw this in strong after a minute or two now. Zero then, where does it go from your auxiliary view? Zero goes to C. So zero can join back down to C. C goes to one before you can cross over to A. So join C back to one. And one joins back to A. And that is the infiltration that side done. So let's draw that in strong so it shows up a bit better. Point one is at the bottom, so C to one and one to A will be hidden detail because it's in underneath that actual prism. And you can draw that right hand side of the prism uh, in strong then. So okay, so that is the right hand side done. Finish off the top here. Let's put in C strong first because C is sitting in the front of the elevation. So C. Well, we're going to put this in strong first off. strong up to here and then the prism is in front so that's in detail same thing with B and B back down strong to hit the prism and then in detail again follow your labeling A goes to B so this is all in detail that's at the back B joins to zero Zero joins down to C, then going strong because you're sitting in front there. C joins to one, which is here, and that can go in strong because nothing else sitting in front of it. And one joins back down then to A, and you're hidden detail because again you're working at the back. Alright, draw the rest of the prism in strong. Okay, so that's it drawn in strong. Just going to put in another small bit of shading just to highlight where the prism is sitting. Okay, so that's the question done. Uh, Infiltration from 2012, uh, part A and B and C finished off. So, hope that helped. If it did, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more DCG tutorials. Okay, thank you and good luck.